Welcome everyone to today's webinar, which is part of the Driving Digital Transformation Summit hosted on Brightfall. My name is Ian Ginn, Director of IFG Consulting, and we mainly focus on working with smaller innovative software vendors who face the challenge of scaling beyond their borders, mainly in Europe. Our tagline is Broker Innovation in Mobile. And it is my pleasure to host and moderate today's discussion with our esteemed panel. Today's format will be a video panel discussion. The title is Uncovering 5G and Edge Strategies Related to IoT Within Industry 4.0. To give a bit of context, 5G is the first mobile technology which promises wireless connectivity with guaranteed quality of service with very low latency. What I mean by low latency is around a trip of sub 10 milliseconds, and even as low as two milliseconds, which is a prerequisite for autonomous robots. Is this a breakthrough for the industry? And is full automation robotics the future? What is real? Where are we now? And what does the future hold? The discussion part of the webinar is scheduled to be here for five minutes, after which we will turn from the audience. During the discussion, feel free to submit questions via the chat window. Without further ado, it's my privilege to introduce our esteemed panelists. In no particular order, starting with Jürgen Hauser, is CEO of Unlimited, the IoT division of Reliance. Previously, Jürgen headed up Deutsche Telekom's M2M division and was director of IoT at Uribo in Qatar. He brings with him years of experience and understands that to build IoT, you need to also build an ecosystem. On today's panel, he is representing the operator and is joining us from Mumbai. Magnus Melander is a natural entrepreneur and deeply involved with the IoT startup community in Sweden, bringing together large industry players with innovators. Among other ventures, he is co-founder of Things and the Alliance of Swedish IoT Companies. On today's panel, he is representing the startup community and is joining us from Stockholm. Vinny Dahar has a deep understanding of private networks and IoT across industries, including telecoms, media, automotive, utility, and public safety, and is currently working for Mav Mavenir in business development. On today's panel, he is representing the vendors and joining us with Magnus from Stockholm. Last but not least, we have Jari Majo. Jari Majo has been working in various positions in the automatory in the distributed control systems business since the 1990s in Europe and US, currently heading global supply chain technology for Danfoss drivers. On today's panel, he is representing the industry, the end users, and is joining us from Helsinki. If you want to know more about the panelists or myself, please click on the attached tab for this webinar, and you can find us also on LinkedIn. Welcome to the panel. So starting off with the, the first uh, question, uh, um, um, and so I'll be asking you in turn to just do an in, in, in initial statement um, in, in relation to the first question. So Jürgen, uh, starting with you as the representing the operators, from your perspective, to what extent is 5G combined with edge computing a game changer for industry and industry 4.0? Uh, uh, first of all, it's for sure it's a journey. It's not done in one day, whatever we are doing here. But uh, uh, there are two different aspects. One part for me is, in principle, edge computing. If you're looking, if you're collecting more and more data, uh, and we will have more and more auto issues in our network, and we will, will not be all the time full connected. So what I personally believe, and you can see it more and more, you need more intelligent at the edge, right. independent of this. You need more intelligent at the edge, which is uh, disconnected to you need low power at the edge. Of course, you have to find the right balance between low power at the edge and and more more power, more 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 processor capacity in in the network. But this is clear for me. Uh, this is coming up more and more so that the, the system itself can work more more autonomous. 5G, I believe, is a is, is a different approach. Uh, on one side, yes, 5G plus uh, edge computing. But on the other side, I see, especially in the industry. 
uh, on campus areas uh, that uh, he also year in year uh, huge companies are testing starting testing 5g regarding uh, we need a new technology on this we have to combine we have to use one technology from the campus and later on with all the vendors in the back so that we can use one technology with all the advantages of, of 5g more bandwidth latency and all the other things which are coming up but uh, uh, I, I, my feeling it's uh, uh, 5G at the beginning more on, on the campus uh, uh, area and, and Edge is independent for me of, of 5G. Edge is the principal thing. Uh, uh, we have to act much more, more intelligent at the Edge. Right. And I guess that's uh, that, uh, just to, to comment on that, the Edge, I guess, also reduces that low latency, which I mentioned is a, is a program. Uh, more real time, closer to real time and so on. So on. There's many, many, many uh, aspects on this side. So, Magnus, over to you. And, and from a startup perspective, what, what, what's your uh, view of, uh, of this area? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. And I, I really adhere to what Jürgen is saying. Uh, this is two completely different trends or, or aspects that we talk about. I think when it comes to the 5G aspect of it, it's a much more important uh, feasibility or opportunities created are more around the, the private mobile networks uh, than, than Edge by itself. Uh, and the huge difference from my point of view is that the smaller startups, um, entrepreneurs, uh, all those kind of companies, the, the infrastructure part of this issue is not really relevant. Now, we have learned over the years to be open to all kinds of co connectivity. And this is just, from that point of view, this is just an evolution. Uh, creating some new advantages. The edge development is, on the other hand, a very, very interesting aspect for startups. So, like with things, we have more like 15 or 16 companies right now working on with edge analytics, edge machine learning, and so forth. So, I think it's, it's very interesting, and the game change is probably more in short term on edge computing. And over time, maybe we'll find applications for the low latencies and all of those things. I'll give the, the, the word to my friend Vina here. Perfect, perfect. Thanks a, thanks a lot for having me here. No, I mean, I, 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 want, I want to make basically a, a quote from a book that I read, uh, Technology vs. Huma uh, Humanity by uh, Gerd Leonhard. He's a, he's a technologist and futurist. And I mean, a quote that I really like, a very powerful quote that humanity will change more in the next 20 years as compared to the last 300 years. It's a very powerful quote. And I think one factor that really defines this exponential possibilities that's um, coming to us in the next 10 to 20 years is the fact that there, is, there are multiple technologies that are maturing at the same time. Um, it's a combination of technologies that basically br will bring a lot of possibility to drive disruption. We've seen cloud maturing last 15 years. We see how cloud has changed the really the, the design principles on how you develop software. It's more open, microservices, Kubernetes based, and now cloud, as you as as you said, Jorgen and uh, Magnus. I mean, cloud now evolving into edge. Uh, a lot of things that possibly that can happen on edge. Big enterprises will embrace it, since that brings the security component, you know, with it. And then you have technologies like machine language, artificial intelligence, and also then on top of it, the ubiquitous connectivity. I mean, all of them are actually maturing at the same time. I mean, we have never seen this happen in, in generations. And one such technology then that is really combining is 5G and Edge, which brings a lot of possibility to build an openness on the Edge, where then enterprises really will embrace that to a large extent to drive innovation to really help drive, um, you know, digitization, um, uh, you know, which they have been, uh, as you said, the organic the journey. They've been on that for many years, but now with this possibility to really bring network capabilities on the edge, it really, really opens up, uh, you know, innovation that can be possibly done on the edge, which of course will bring a lot of disruption and a lot of possibilities of new business models. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. it's really great to see this combination happening and maturing and converging at the same time. Thank you for that. Uh, Jerry, what about you? And uh, let's say from an industrial perspective, because all the other people here are leading into you. At the end of the day, you're the industry in a sense that will be driving the adoption to some degree. What's your what's your take on, on how far and what's the promise that you see and uh, as a for the industry? 
Yes, I said before already, uh, uh, I see it's more as an evolution. I think there has been many, many different ways to communicate between devices and systems in the past. And, and 5G and Edge both are basically bringing something new to the mix. Um, so alone, I don't see them changing the game in the industry so much. What I see uh, potential value there is that uh, back in the day when we had uh, high control or, or centralized control, um, and then we have also had the time when we had a lot of intelligence spread out on the field in the industry, but everything was independent and separate, and you had a hundreds and of a lot of integrations that you had to manage. And the devices really didn't, there was kind of point to point connection always. So the game changer thing that I see and I hope to see in the future is that we have the uh, 5G, low latency, high bandwidth networks, and then we have the edge computing, the intelligence there, and much higher integration than what we have had in the past. And that's where I see the value being brought into the industry that it's not point to point and, and central versus, versus uh, the distributed piece, but, but all together as an ecosystem providing the uh, solutions to the, to the uh, whatever the industry is or the application is and adding the value there by, by having those combined. So that's where I'm kind of seeing the game changer thingy. And, and maybe following on from, from that, because the, the next question I, I had on this was, uh, where are we in the sense of, um, you know, the, the standards were published and agreed a few years ago. Um, you know, there are the first trials running, you know, where are we in, in, in the, you know, in the journey is how much is, you know, we have this historical context in the telecom industry of the industry pushing, the industry not necessarily responding. I mean, is industry now connecting with, with, the, with the vendors and the operators in the, in the right way? Are they working together properly? And how much is hype versus, versus reality, I guess? And maybe you guys, who wants to take that? Anyone wants to ask questions? Anyone? To I can, start, I can start and continue what I say, what I said, and maybe the guys can then jump on the on 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 it. Uh, but I think from the height perspective, uh, especially from if we look outside of consumer consumer businesses and uh, uh, phones and applications like that, I think we are now getting to the industrial scale where we in industry applications and industrial users we are looking at very interestingly that can we move, is, is this time to move? So we are, we are kind of leaving already the hype and, and getting much more practical and much more results oriented. And can we actually do and implement something, bring some benefits there? So, so from, from that perspective, I think there is, gonna, there is already a little bit of pull from, from uh, the industrial side, but, but uh, we are not very far yet from my perspective. Right. And and uh, just to create a bit of uh, tension here, where do you see the before we pass on to someone else? Are operators the right, you know, traditional operators the right guys to help in this, or do you see an, a new a new species of company to, to uh, you know needing to be established from a agility perspective? Because you've got big operators, let's say like Reliance, for example. I know they've been uh, they've got their own IoT division, but. How, how do you see that? Do you, do you think it's the traditional vendors and, and suppliers, or do you see this as a new breed? Yari, do you want to just finish on that comment, and then we'll pass over? I think it's going to be some sort of a hybrid of the two. Uh, I don't see it uh, either or. Uh, there is definitely room for new players, and, and uh, that's going to come in. But for sure, the traditional the big operators, they are there and we can always go back to them. There is a lot of research and and and, and uh, the legwork done already. Uh, but I think there is going to be more competition, more uh, tailored and localized solutions being uh, brought in us as well. Okay, great. Magnus, you wanted to jump in on this? You're on mute, I think, Magnus. Yeah, thank you. For those of us who have been around for a while and experienced all the different kind of generations of, of, of mobile networks, you know, it takes a lot of time until things actually happen in big scale. And, and I think GSMA, 
they, they estimate something like 5% of the IoT connections in five years will be on 5G or something. So there is a couple of years until we have a real network that covers. In, in Sweden, we are a little blended by, by the, the Ericsson in Heritage and, and we love everything that's new in, 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 in mobile networks. But I always tell them that, you know, the, the factories of Sweden, they are not in the cities. No. And they, there are expectations that will have maybe half of the country covered in a couple of years. With 5G. So I think it's all kind of issues until this really happens. And that's why it is happening, but it's not happening very fast. I don't think no. Yeah, then, yeah, do you want to uh, come, come in? I want to add a few points. Um, uh, at the end, we are talking about return on invest, very simply. Uh, uh, because uh, if you see, for example, uh, most of them, they have invested in, especially in India. Let's talk about India, for example. Uh, now we have the mass rollout of the 4G network, and we have hundreds of millions of new customers in the last two years. Uh, thanks to, to Geo and others, and uh, nobody will swap from one day to the other to the 5G. That's clear. Of course, you need a return on investment for, for infrastructure. I believe this is one one uh, key element uh, we all the time have to think about. And I, I, I like the statement from, from uh, Max also that, uh, Magnus, from uh, uh, that not all of them. Um, that only 5%, you, you mentioned 5% are just in the future will use uh, 5G. I believe also it's, it's really a long journey. But what I see personally is most of the use cases are simple sensor data connection. There's no data volume. There's no, no demand on things like that. It's much more if you're talking about a connected car or if you're on, on a campus for more closer to real time. I believe these, but these are more the enterprise. And, and in the consumer market, it's bandwidth, bandwidth, bandwidth at the end of the day. Uh, I believe this is one core element. And I want to add one more point. For me, it's, it's open the, the spectrum for more competitors in the market. If you're looking uh, uh, now, the industry can buy themselves spectrum uh, for the campus. And this is a game changer for me. Before there was one telco on any telco services you could buy by the telco. Yes. Now with with, with uh, the new uh, way how to sell how, how spectrum can be bought from from others from the industry, it's a game changer. This is the game changer for me, uh, so that they can work much more independent the industries in some areas if they want. Do you, do you think uh, on that? Do you think that? Um you mentioned about uh, operate or say industry being able to buy uh, licenses. I mean, I'm aware in Germany that being the case. Is do you aware of that in other countries? Do you, do you, have you seen that? It's that coming. Way? I believe Magnus can can add some more points. But what you see it around the world, it will come. They're here in India, we are in the same discussion, uh, uh, and I'm sure it's coming step by step. Okay, Magnus, you want to jump in on that? Uh, well, I, I agree with all of that. I, I, as I said initially, I think the, the public network is, is the game changer, if there is a game changer. If you look at the key deliverable for, for 5G in, in IoT, to me that's kind of the critical applications and the, the master applications. All of those will take a lot of time, yeah. first of all. Secondly, there are very few uh, critical applications that we can actually cope with unless we have a very big network deployed. So. And, and third, I'm not even sure that you can run on the same network both critical and massive IoT. I'm not sure. People are still arguing about that. But we'll see because they're going to be optimized for different things. So to speak. Is that not what would is put under the label of uh, slicing? So the, one of the promises in 5G is the ability to slice so that you can then... I know. I can make a comment. I can make a comment here. I mean... I think, I mean, in the in the first time in the history of uh, how um, the mobile networks are designed and specced, I think uh, this is the first time that you see in a 3G PC spec for 5G, there are two fundamental things that are brought in. One is the ability to really uh, disintegrate or, or, um, or have a separate uh, sort of division between a control plane and a user plane. Right. Which really means that basically you can bring the user plane to to edge. Uh, which really the enterprises have been seeking for many, many years because then enterprises have much more control on the network and much more dedication of the network. Yes. The other thing then, of course, uh, to Magnus's point, I mean, 5G as, 
as a, as a standard is basically designed for enterprises you know a lot of lot of generations before we designed for consumer based com connect uh, communication where you have more um, uh, downlink than uplink you have similar type of services you know either mm -hmm. data wise you know you could really run basically with a similar kind of slas and kpis but 5g 5g in its in its specification basically allows the ability to really you know build a, a separation between let's say a, a low end type of iot use case where you're connecting a sensor or connecting a product and then on the other hand it can go up to creating a slice for running a very very complex high performance use case like an ar vr mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for example, the remote assistance. I mean, I, I work with a lot of application companies where, you know, remote assistance using AR technology has become a reality. And 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 to the point of 5G and uh, and the edge, I think this is the first time that you, you build a la landscape where you know, this brings telecom and IT together. I mean, we've been hearing we've been hearing telecom and IT converging for the last 10 years or 15 years, yeah. but now the ability that 5G brings the openness together with edge it really really brings the convergence of telecom and it that is that is again a yet another powerful thing that will right, really drive disruption um, so so on that filling on on that uh, vinny maybe um, maybe someone else wants to take this so what do we think are the drivers to adoption again you know the standards have been set we know about let's say these parameters around low latency uh, multiple devices or the or the or the, the density of devices you know, there are different parameters in the 5G standard, and and it, to some degree, I see edge somehow connected. But you know what what it, you know what is actually driving the adoption side of it? You know, again, pull push pull. Have we got someone to take that? Someone to take that? Magnus, are you? I can make a comment. I mean, mm -hmm. I could probably make two comments. I mean, I, I'm working uh, uh, as somebody mentioned. I think Magnus, you mentioned in, in Germany. I mean, uh, the legislation has already opened up the spectrum. Um, in band 78 in Germany, and 34 licenses have already been um, have been allotted to the enterprises. So enterprises can actually build dedicated networks for themselves. And 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 two things that actually will really drive the adoption. Um, one, uh, the ecosystem. I think you mentioned by Jorgen because um, 5G still is a bit of low on the maturity of ecosystems. I mean. Uh, availability of devices, availability of um, um, system integration capabilities because the network is open and, and you'll see more open way of deploying, deploying these networks. So system integration will play a very big important role. Mm. How, competent, how, how competent are system integrators to really build a, a, a 5G network on the, on the premise, including then connecting it to an edge. So, I would say ecosystem basically is one key aspect that needs to grow um, over time to really drive the adoption of, um, of network and edge together. Do we see do we see stepping stones and combination between private LTE as a stepping stone towards having a 5G? I mean, obviously 4G and 5G are historically quite well connected. Let's say, um, meaning they're a similar core network and it's all IP based uh, technology. Um, is that the logical progression that operators should be following? Also, we know that Ericsson has recently brought out the, the shared RAM ability to, to basically re, re, uh, reposition or reuse the, the, the RAM, which can either be run on 4 or 5G or in combination. Is that the sort of logical progression? Is it a learning? Is it a process that we're talking about? Someone want to take that question? I can start if you like. Please. That, I, 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 Continuing on what Dina is saying, I, I really believe this is the, the major change in our industry. It's uh, the IT and the telecommunication will come together, and and the private uh, or, or the, the the limited or whatever you want to call it network approach is what's going to change everything. So that question is about who will actually pay for rollout of 5G. If we had a 5G network everywhere, uh, we could do a lot of things that people dream about, but most of it cannot be done until we have a network. Who will actually build those networks? Operators in general, very generically, they, they're not really keen on making a lot of capex investments these days. And, and, and I've been in a lot of discussions where operators and enterprises are arguing who should pay for this. 
when the operators say, well, this is for the enterprises, and the enterprises say, well, we're going to buy a good service when you deliver one. So I think there is an, another entity being created around, or many different entities being around, how do you actually deploy networks, who is actually running them, how do you share them? There will be many different ways, and it's going to take a couple of years for that to be figured out. I guess. Mm -hmm. I want to add one more point. Uh, there are two parts. One part is the network. Uh, uh, you just mentioned the other part is probably also the device. If you're looking what's the pricing for a device of a 5G device today, why uh, it's too high? I mean, if it takes, uh, it has to come up to to, to high volume to scale it up so that your uh, the 5G pricing for for the hardware for the device is going down. It's very relevant, and if this is because at the end, where you are burning money, it's on one side the investor, uh, the investment is coming from the telco side, infrastructure for sure. But I, if I'm an enterprise customer and I have to invest in hundred thousand units, like Danfoss or whoever is doing this, and uh, if a five G device is cost, let's say, the double of of a four G or whatever device. Then you're thinking many times. Oh, what is my real advantage uh, in the function set compared to the cost? So, uh, for me, uh, the device cost is one one core element uh, to, to, to make it high scalable. Okay, that's a very good point. And do you see the enterprises having the skill set? I mean, because the skill set of running a network, uh, an I telecom network, if you like, is 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 that transferable with the IT teams of a of an enterprise? Be, be able to be upskilled, or do we feel that uh, again? This is uh, who, who's, who's going to make this happen, if you like, and, and operate these these networks. Do we think it's on the enterprise side, or the operators as a managed service. Where, where do we see that all coming together? Someone to take that. I mean, I can I make a comment here. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I would start how we got started, at least, and, yeah. and that was, of course, early days, and we are still in early days. But we chose to approach not to start managing ourselves, but find a good partner that can offer the network and the infrastructure as such for us as a service. So, and that's an easy and fast way to get started. I don't know if that's in the long run, maybe IT will de develop the competencies, but at least for us to get started, that was very um, fluent way of getting started and not needing to invest in the, the network itself, but but try to look from the application. How do we apply it, and how, how do we get benefits from it? Okay, that's, that's good. And and can you just uh, share? So so do they they they've got a managed it's a managed service approach. Would you say at this stage, or um, what's what is that is that is that how you define it? Or, or yes, it? yes, it is. Okay, great. Sure. Jürgen, maybe from your side, I mean, then maybe and I combine this with sort of the next question. Where do we see this happening? I mean, uh, again, we've been talking about uh, some of the, let's say, the, the parameters around setting this stuff up, but can we sort of talk about, uh, and Yari's already, thank you for leading that on what you're doing. I think, Magna, uh, sorry, um, um, Jürgen, you mentioned that you're running a few campus trials or involved in them. Uh, again, uh, that'd be a good point. Can people maybe share a bit where they see this becoming, let's say, reality? Uh, let's say you have to differentiate a little bit between Indian, where I'm based, and, and Europe. Uh, here in Indian, India, uh, uh, there's no 5G network. There's only on the campus areas uh, with some base stations they are doing this. Of course, there's no existing 5G network. They, yeah. As I mentioned before, they have just rolled out a few years before the 4G. And now everybody has a 4G smartphone and with, with uh, services like this. That means in India, I would say 5G on the campus. Uh, for and then it's even you know, more or less industry 4.0 around this area of industry 4.0. I, I we can see it and close to the production, let's say close to the manufacturer. We see this and they are testing, they are testing and testing, testing. But if you're looking uh, international uh, and uh, if you see what's coming from, from the automotive, we have also we are in touch with, with most of the automotive customers. Uh, the OEMs who also want to address the India market. There's all the time a little bit of discussion to how we should go ahead. Should we go ahead with 4G? Uh, wh how we can migrate from 4G to 5G because they are coming from Europe or they're coming from the US or from the Japanese market. Uh, this market is much more uh, involved in 4G, 5G compared to here. So I believe that's the reason why I see 5G could be in a, in a mid and long term very interesting also for the automotive part and bandwidth and many, many other parts. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that insight. Anyone else want to comment on where this is happening? I mean, I can make a comment. I mean, I'm 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 heavily involved in uh, private network uh, discussions. Um, I mean, of course, uh, led by Germany. As I said, I mean, legislation allows uh, having dedicated spectrum. Japan is on the same bandwagon. A lot of things are happening here in Nordics. I've, I've worked with uh, within Nordics market for the last seven years. Um, I think um, you definitely see a few elements of 5G that really helps basically driving speed. I mean. One aspect to your question before, I mean, can we drive scale in terms of building competence uh, from the SI companies to really deploy these networks? I think one common denominator of driving a scale is basically having an open architecture um, and, you know, being able to build it on standard hardware, stand, standard software um, uh, uh, principles and technologies. And 5G basically brings that aspect also. In 5G, they, you know, there is a more software-led approach of defining the networks, right. disaggregate, disaggregating it from the hardware, right. compared to how you've seen in past when you had more vertical approach. It's more horizontal approach. You know, before it was built on um, by most of the big vendors was built on uh, purpose-built hardware, but now you see this disaggregation of software from hardware. Mm. We see now at your point uh, before, Ian. I mean, we see that dis disaggregation happening on the radio side as well. Um, I mean, in Mavinia, we, we are a big uh, driver of Open RAN initiative. Uh, Open RAN now you see is happening, uh, is being embraced embraced quite quite a, quite a bit um, across the world. Uh, it, it is being embraced uh, heavily by the enterprise. Um, I mean, I talk to enterprises, they're very, very happy to, to really uh, drive uh, the Open RAN initiative. Open RAN for, for your audience is basically uh, it's simply, if I define it, it's the concept of disaggregating the radio software from the radio ha hardware. Yeah. Um, that allows basically, you know, standardization that drives, um, you know, um, economic, econo economical disruptions. It brings, uh, you know, uh, many players in, in the ecosystem. And and we have now deployments happening. Uh, Rakuten um, Japan is deploying an open uh, RAN-based network. Um, we have a similar contract that we uh, announced with Dish Network in US. Okay. All, the, all the German enterprises that I'm talking to, they really want to fast forward the uh, the uh, yeah the the fast forward the openness and the whole, more the software-oriented way of developing radio networks. So, okay. And that basically scale um, because the SI companies understand how to work on standard hardware, standard software. It makes it easy to really build an ecosystem around open architecture. Good, good. Magnus, I think you want to come in on that? Yeah, yeah, I just kind of for the topic. Uh, uh, so I just want to follow on with that. So, so at least I have been living through the entire IT kind of era where we came from. Can I worked with IBM initially, who owned everything from the, the bolt in the floor all the way up to whatever the applications. And, and we know what made the IT revolution happen. It was a layered kind of economical way approach to things. And I think we are just about to open the telecoms industry in the same way. It's, everybody knows if you have competition and everything a layer, there will be much better prices, better performance, better services, more choices. So I think that is the major change or maybe a revolution with 5G. The other thing that 5G brings is basically that we will open new use cases one or two or three not hundreds or thousands but there are some use cases which are really helped by 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 uh, 5g and and my favorite one people talk a lot about making surgery over the globe and all those kind of things i have my own favorite one i think the latency uh, advantage with 5g is is really important that's very tangible and if you think a little bit further on what to use that for beyond you know, making surgery over the globe or, or everybody, all cars driving by themselves. I think that the uh, consumer related application like audio, meaning that playing together, music, creating music on different locations, that could be a real driver for 5G. And there is, yeah. I, I give you a tip watch out for something called Elk OS. That's an operating system developed exactly for this. And right with 5G now, they have a very good opportunity to make the, some use of that in big, big scale. Okay. And so, audio. Remember audio. That's where we came from the latency. That, that's good. I, I just want to come back to something, um, combining a few thoughts here, which have sort of processed in my mind as I've been speaking. Uh, speaking. Um, we've got Jürgen who says the business case. You know, start with 
what you know the, where's the money i guess is is uh, the short on that one and then we're talking about user cases and then we've got enterprises who have got you know existing networks but what happens first because you've got maybe you know the network of uh, suppliers who see network providers and operators all saying this is the future we need to get into this on the other side you've got the enterprises who are saying okay what's in it for me me was okay so i've already got a dis I'm, I'm busy already right all day job now, now we're gonna try something out um and which user case um so so how does the industry you know how do we mold this all together really i guess into something and and i guess for the audience i'm thinking of the question of you know what is the way of tapping into this what would you suggest to the audience we've got both no doubt operators on here we've got suppliers we've got uh, enterprises any any from your you know from your domain how would you advise them to get get started let's say particularly around this um campus uh, iot and um edge world have you got any suggestions any comments anyone to take that have i have i blown uh, have, have someone want to take that at all no okay so where do you start maybe maybe jerry i mean you go you said you you picked a supplier but did you pick a supplier on on the basis of uh, of uh, a user case? Did you start that way, or did you said, "Oh, let's let's do something"? You know, we want to see what this thing can do, and then you know, how did you go about trying to work out why why you're going down this route? And that's an interesting question because we are, of course, as a, as a user, we are looking at Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, oh. field buses. Everything is there in the mix already, and 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 why would we pick 5G then? Or uh, something else. Um, in our our case, if I just reflect what we did uh, and and how we came came to that conclusion that we want to start with 5G, was that we have been we maintained this what we call technology radars, and 5G has been coming closer in that radar. So we came to a point where we needed to say, is this the time to start doing something, or sh should we still keep it a little bit outside? Um, we we ran into some partners as we were having that thought process. We had some uh, cases where we thought we could actually use it, and or improvement ideas where we could have gone Wi-Fi, for instance. But then we started bundling these things together, and then we decided that uh, the cost level is there for us to experiment and get get started. Uh, we have the need. We have the partner. Let's pull the trigger. So, so but, but all, everything lined up in a way in our case. And, and, and should something not have lined up, we could have done most of it using not 5K, for instance. So for, in our case, it was more about this, that you had a need, you had the ecosystem in terms of the partner. In our case, it's only one because they have two or three partners behind them so we didn't need we, we needed only one and and uh and and then reasonable cost level to get started with yeah. so that's that that's the story in short how we got started so with that why, yeah that's that's very good so would you say it's sort of a, a proof of concept approach first of all to see you know what can this do and uh, would that be a fair reflection meaning that you're not maybe spending huge amounts of money you, you know, coming back to Jörg's comment about the business case, the business case, you know, you're actually trying to build the business case, I guess, for the future to prove things. So would it be in that sort of domain? Would that be the right sort of categorization? Yes, it is. We are, we are still in experimentation experimentation phase. So we yeah. haven't done full scale, full factories, everything. So we, we, we cover now one factory, actually one third of the factory as of today out of our whole factory network so we are definitely there in, in the first step of the journey if you will yeah. uh, but but still uh proving the concept and looking how do we apply is where what where's the beef in a way to go uh and, and expand it Good. magnus you wanted to, to come in on that yeah, I, 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 you know things we work with a lot of corporates and, and small innovative companies and 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 i i, I think there is a one more holistic view of this large companies who don't have a proper digital transformation agenda or strategy worked out they shouldn't play around with bits and pieces and technologies like there's it's got to fit into something bigger which i hear that it's, it's the case with them for you know you come to this kind of nature and you start to dig into those areas and you learn 
while it was. So instead of having people in other industries imposing to industries what they're going to do, you should actually have to build on your own company and start from there and then ask for help or try and you know work yourself through this. And also timing is very important. But we have a lot of cases where large companies jump into projects about edge analytics or whatever, and then they figure out they don't have the infrastructure to take care of the results. So, you know, you just have to have the whole digital transformation journey figured out uh, before you start. That's what you do. Okay. All right. So, I, I, I thank you for that comment. This, it, it, I'm going to move on to the, the questions from the, the panel questions now, unless anyone else wants to. to uh, Vinny, I think you have one more comment, if I understand correctly. I, mean, I just want to make a comment. I mean, as we all agree, that this will be an evolution. and. Um, of course, uh, I mean, uh, there are good and bad of, uh, of, uh, of all different technologies that will really, you know, complement each other and what we learn from each other. I think if you look at Wi-Fi, I mean, they, they have been, Wi-Fi has been quite advanced in terms of the, the way the ecosystem uh, development has happened uh, in that technology. Very, very open approach. 5G and 3GPP is coming into that race now. And of course, with how 5G technology is being built, I mean, it allows basically the ecosystem development. But I, I would say, I mean, at large, I mean, there is a place for both. Um, I mean, uh, for instance, when I talk to the enterprises, I mean, a couple of things that they really uh, see 5G brings, which is, uh, uh, which is a really great thing, is security. I mean, 5G networks basically are built on a principle of, uh, you know, making an identity, um, you know, to a SIM card. So you know you know who the the, the device is or who the user is. Um, so there is a security element in built in, in the PGPP network. Mm -hmm. Then you have the element also of reliability because you're running on your own on spectrum, so you can control the network in a better way. Yeah. When you look at enterprises getting into, you know, getting into sort of now bringing in wireless connectivity into their core business processes. I mean, when you put a wireless network on a on an assembly line then you really, really need security, reliability, and, and ability to really uh, handle low latency. So, but of course, at, uh, as a trade-off, I mean, it, it, it will take some time uh, in 5G to build the ecosystem of devices, the ecosystem of SI companies that have the competence, the ecosystem yeah. of applications. So, I mean, there's a trade-off, but, uh, but, in, but in, in short, I think, all technologies will, will will live, and they will you know collaborate with each other. You know they will learn from each other, and I think you know it, it, it is going to be an interesting area. Um, it's a journey, and it's an interesting process. Jürgen, your comment from you, I see. For me, it's more also important. Who's the driver? Seat? It's uh, the technology, or uh, uh, the, the, the the demand. Let's say the, in the demand. I believe the problem is development a new technology is coming up faster and faster. It's, it's, you have the impression it's uh, each quarter, next quarter we can sit here, we can talk about the next technology. And you are jumping from one to the other. And, and the customer itself sometimes, if they're investing, they want to invest in a long, in a mid or long term investment, not uh, if you're buying a car and uh, you have selected a car and somebody selling you please wait another six months and a new car from the same company is coming. What would you do? You will wait and wait again and again. That means sometimes you also have to think, of, is this the technology which is enabling me for things I have to do? And, and not over all the time with this new technology. We have to think a little bit about uh, these points also. Uh, that's the reason why I believe 5G will take some time uh, so that we have the right use cases in the back, and then it will come. I personally believe it will come more from the consumer side and then swap into, uh, no, let's say, 5G campus, then the consumer part, and then uh, for the B2B approach and, and a broader area is my impression. And Edge will come before because Edge has a clear advantage already today. It's a must in some areas. Without Edge, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, very, very good comment. So, Thank you for that. I'm just going to, uh, conscious of time, I want to just move to some of the, the questions then, if you look in the in the panel, so the ones that Cecilia has done. The first one that uh, has come up, and this was someone who posted it kindly, a lady called uh, Melissa Jenkins, uh, who asked the question, how do we prevent operator lock-in? So anyone want to take that one? Um, I <laughs> Okay. Oh, Melissa, Melissa, we work a lot with with Equino where Melissa works. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes, I know her. Now, I think it's a, it's a very good question. I think it will be, as we move towards a similar business, like the IT business, this will be sorted out more or less by itself. And it, as long as the operator, the, the CMA operators will be, uh, let's call it semi-monopolist, based on granted spectrum that they've got from one another, we cannot, we, meaning the others, cannot really force openness. But technology-wise, you can easily move from one SIM card to another over the air. You know, all of that can be done, but they, there are other limitations. And openness and competition will probably help that work. Right, right, right. Understand. Anyone else want to comment on that? Just a comment. I mean, I think I, I totally agree with Jorgen. I mean, there will always be over time a demand and and uh, and sort of full, full. I mean, coming together and converging. Um, I mean, openness is a common denominator to drive sort of uh, you know more players to come in the ecosystem. But the other thing I think is more the demo democratization of how you actually uh, can utilize spectrum for good of society. Um, so, I mean, German, Germany surely is taking a lead here. So, if you do allow enterprises to have their dedicated spectrum, that will drive demands basically from the enterprises to have more open architecture and 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 also they would demand and uh, no, you know, less lock-in because that's not good. <laughs> over long term I, I think the key is he is really you know looking at demands looking at requirements and putting and keeping the customer in the center on the center center of the ecosystem yeah. okay very very good all right i'm just, I'm just going through the questions in a second I'm, I'm, hopefully this one makes sense i'm going to sort of read it out which is um one common thing is the future of 5g and iot is cloud Cloud is the future of 5G edge, and I believe also IoT as payload in the networks will be cloud-based. Does the fact that IoT edge and 5G all share cloud interconnect them? I think it's an answer. In, it's pretty much an answer in the question as well. I mean. Uh, uh, that is that is of course what is what we have seen i mean what cloud has done uh, over time in the last 15 20 uh, years um, with ott being mostly the drivers i mean it has brought, it has converged a lot of technologies the way the way products are developed today it's very software net development if you look at automotive industry i mean a car is more a software than a mechanical product now and when you have a software design in a product then of course you you need to sort of inbuilt the openness for it to be deployed either on cloud or deployed on an edge. Uh, and edge is, edge is actually a, a cloud, but it allows security and it allows things to be deployed on prem. So I, I definitely see cloud with edge coming in. I mean, it is definitely a converging point, um, a converging uh, landscape for most of these technologies to come together. Right. Yes, just add to that very, very rapidly. Uh, the uh, like cloud is basically a new, a new version of internet. We call it. it it's the, it's a materialized internet. So I think it's from a technology point of view that development is obvious, but from a security privacy point of view, I don't think it's obvious. So I think that will be much more of the discussion. Well, what information will actually a corporate and enterprise be willing to share with others, and all those kind of issues will be much more of interest coming to. And that will stop a lot of the, the technology-wise. You know, coming together, sharing data, sharing different things. That's what I someone's raised the question. Thanks for that. Once someone's raised the question of uh, the use of uh, IPv4 versus IPv6. Now, I'm thinking that's that's across. It's not a 5G specific issue, but of course, it does come into play. Um, if you're an enterprise, what's what's what, what's the journey, I guess, to to achieve that? I presume you need IP6 for, for 5G. Would I be be right in saying that? I don't know. I'm actually not the uh, to ask you, but. Uh, how do how do you how do you how does the does that journey of IP play into the five G IoT space? Someone want to comment on that? I mean, I, I think again, I mean, you five uh, G brings that ability to really, as I said, I mean, to um, uh, to bring separation between a user plane and and, and the control plane. So it's yeah. more more it's more built to really drive the adoption of IP. Um, IP6 uh, technology. IP6, as you say, across. I mean, it's not only then limited to 5G. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 
basically a protocol that allows packets to be sent from one point to the other point. So I think 5G intrinsically brings the ability to adopt to that uh, in a faster way because you have the ability to separate the user pane from the control pane. Well, thank you, um, everyone. I think we're sort of reaching the end of our time, unless you have any final particular comments that, that you'd like to make. Um, I mean, I say the journey towards, uh, it's a journey to understand. There are lots of uh, challenges which uh, uh, lie ahead, but, but uh, push and pull, and the business case mentioned, and the user cases. So uh, the ecosystem was also mentioned, I think, needs to be, uh, to be generated. But uh, I, think, I think we're coming to the end of our time. Um, and I'd like to thank you again for your time in, in, in joining this call. and. Uh, Look forward to staying in contact. Maybe we'll be able to do future ones like this. So have a good day, guys, and uh, see you soon. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.